So, g'day people, how you going? This is Glenn, and today we're going to have a look at a glacier. This is plenty ping cute, or whatever you bloody call it, glacier. And here's a comparison image from 1985 to 2019. So that's uh, 24 years, no, 34 years, should I say? 34 years. So this glacier is in the European Alps, blah, 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 blah. Mount Blanc Massif. So it is a beautiful glacier. And um yeah, a lot of people on the internet like to go, Oh my god, oh my god man, the, the climate change is not real. Oh, it's always happening, but uh, we don't cause it, it's uh, the volcano. And they're like the, the retards of the planet Earth. So if we Slide this counter across there. You can see there's a lot of ice. What you need to look is this lower section. So if I... Can I take the counter down? Oh, if I take the counter down... So now it's at 1985. But if I wanted to take it down to 2019... And we go across, you look... Ooh. Ooh. A lot of that ice down below disappears. You can see, especially in the, that section here. You can see I'm going across, disappears. Here, in the lower elevations, actually disappears as well. And if we go up, okay, a lot of this section next to the arrow is actually there. It's actually uh, okay. It's mainly the lower elevations where the ice has actually disappeared. So, if we go up to the northern section, you will see that a lot of the ice up the top has disappeared as well. That's a lower elevation. And probably more exposed to wind, which actually can help in, in the re reduction of ice, especially if that wind is a lot warmer than it should actually be. Wow, this is such an amazing thing. You can get two composite images from um, two different time periods. A lot of people go, oh yeah, but th that's Photoshop. They, they took the photo and they Photoshop it. Oh my god, you are so stupid, you are so stupid, you don't know how the science works. The science do not work like that. If they photoshop it, one day they can find out, and then they get kicked out of their job, and they go, Oh no, you cannot be a scientist anymore. You're fired. And a lot of people who have actually done that, committed fraud in their science work, have actually lost their jobs. Uh, I think I think their PhD actually gets reviewed. So if it's found that the PhD has been also written up via fraudulent means, they also lose that as well. And if they've done a master's and done the same thing, well, that can be the same. But, you know, these people who uh, do not believe in the human effects of climate change will... You can't convince them anyway. Uh, maybe they should just learn a little bit about chemistry. So here we have a image of a carbon. And as you can see, uh, this molecule can actually attract heat. And this is actually methane. Um, carbon dioxide actually can come from methane when it's broken down, but methane is also a gas as well. So you see the solid line, dark line. Let me see if we can actually click on that image. But first of all, here we have methane plus two oxygen, uh, can broken down into carbon dioxide and water. And that's how, uh, that's a combustion, but it's one of the chemical reactions. And you can see methane 
actually can change into a lot of different chemicals. And if we want to look at the actual molecule, now here it is. So you got the four hydrogen bonded to it. So you got two up and one going to the left. They are just straight bonding. The one going to the right is behind the carbon and the one down towards the south is coming out from the carbon. That's how those bondings are. And then you've got the, the uh, degree in which they actually angle towards each other. So that's a good atom. And it's these bondings in between the hydrogen and the carbon that actually absorb the energy because they, they are, you need a certain amount of energy to break those bonds. But beforehand, they absorb energy up until that point, and then they break. So they absorb your energy, and when that energy input disappears, they give off that energy as uh, heat and other stuff as well. So that's how uh, bonding actually occurs, electron bonding. And that's a, a major factor why the Earth retains heat, because... If you have more of these elements in the atmosphere, they can absorb and radiate heat. Now, just keep on passing the heat onto each other, bouncing it back and forth, back and forth, instead of radiating it out into the planet. So that's why the planet actually keeps the heat into the atmosphere. And that's basically why the glaciers are mounting, because there's more heat in the atmosphere. And so here we have. CO to Earth. Let us know. Oh my God, that's not real. That's it. The how do they get this? What the no? Well, here currently parts per million, so ppm parts per million, four oh nine ninety five, and that is September. Ooh, and if you can go back, you can see September two thousand eighteen four oh five, and it should oh. actually give you. Um, is there a graph here? Coldest August 1908-1912. That, that would be the um, global average. Hottest August 2016. Second hottest August 2019, 217, 215. So all within the last four years. Always hotter. And here's how to actually get it. So you can find this yourself. If you're unable to find yourself, then don't argue anything about climate change. So this is why the glacier is mounting, because of this. Also, other elements that we put in the atmosphere. A major thing that's actually not leading to runaway temperature increase is the amount of crap that we put in the atmosphere, so soot, that would mm, block out the sun's rays getting to the planet, but because it's black it would absorb it, so it would heat, heat up, but that is a little bit of a surprise, anyway, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching my uh, crappy video. And if you disagree with me, oh well, you can have your own opinion. Uh, doesn't mean your opinion is actually valid. And science doesn't really need your opinion. Science just needs you to evaluate the evidence, which a lot of climate change deniers deny. So suck it up.